Alright guys, and welcome back to more Shin Megami Tensei Double Survivor 2 Record Breaker, and here we are returning after pretty much recruiting everybody possible into our team, getting everybody to work together. No more are we fighting each other. We are finally all together. We got side duke back we got miyako on our side and now we need to look for a way to defeat the next administrator aka the, the damn god of the universe apparently one of them <laughs> but anyway what we want to do is actually first of all just go through a lot of these events and to be honest i'm actually going to focus a lot on yamato and then side duke so side duke miyako and yamato are the people we're gonna hang out with here so let's start by hanging out with Yamato Yako calls your name may I have a moment please no I believe you are searching for a present for my brother oh yeah we are actually mr. Shijima came around earlier asking about what would make Yamato happy what did you tell him I cannot fathom my brother enjoying anything Still, I told Mr. Shijima, perhaps he can take him to a foreign... Oh! You vixen. What deceit are you putting into his head? <laughs> I held my tongue until now, circumstances as they were. But let me assure you... Uh-oh. If you ever so much as think about devising another foolish scheme, I will make sure you regret it. <sighs> Brother, you may be adept at reading the dragon stream. But unfortunately, your skill in reading a room is sorely lacking. Mocking me, are you? I acknowledge your courage. As a reward, I shall kill you. <laughs> well, I must repay such a generous reward. Now, let me think. Hmm. How about I grant you the privilege to die a slow, miserable death of dehydration in the center of the vast Sahara? What did you say to me? <laughs> or perhaps, oh, this one's delightful. You could drown in the crystal clear waters of the Aegean Sea. Lovely, no? <laughs> what the hell? What's the meaning of this? Well, anyways, I'm sure you're quite exhausted. What with all the fighting and regressing the world twice. Why not leave Gyps in my care and abandon your responsibilities as a Hotswing? Use the time you're given as a member of the human race to enrich your knowledge through practical learning. Miyako, how dare you? And after a suitable amount of time, do the world a lovely favor. Go off somewhere and die an incredibly gruesome death. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> well then, I must away. Miyako flourishes in her cape, bows elegantly, and departs to repair the terminal. <laughs> Yamato, bro, you gonna let, bro, you gonna let that happen? Your sister just, you just gonna let your sister say all that? Yamato, Yamato keeps his silence. Yamato doesn't mean anything by it. I'm fine. It seems we've wasted time we do not have. I must be going. Take care. <sighs> Go off somewhere. Huh? Yamato walks away. You don't hear him say, please obey me, don't go. Oh! Level 4! SDTP time! Are you ready to SDTP? SDTP all day, all night, every day, every day, all night. <laughs> An ideal administrator. Let's go hang out with Side Dude. We finally get to hang out with like the impossible party members, you know? You find us outside Duke at work on the internet. I mean, terminal. Excuse me. Ah, shining one. My apologies, but the modifications on the terminal are not yet complete. I was just thinking on how we shall put the astrolabe to use, once we have control of it, of course. Help me decide, Side Duke. This is a decision that affects all humanity. It would be best for humans to decide. However, I will happily listen to your opinions. There are many options. For instance, you could use the astrolabe to create a new world free from the administrators. If we are free from their rule, we would avoid any further battles with future administrators. That sounds pretty good. But mankind would have to begin anew in a primeval world. 
does such a thing tempt you? There are other possibilities as well. You could place a rightful administrator on the throne. We could use the astrolabe to transfer the authority from each of you to an administrator. However, it is possible that at some point in the future, another administrator will try to destroy mankind. If it happened with Polaris, it might happen again with another. What if they don't attack us? What if they're on humanity's side? That is unlikely. The administrators are very different from man. They do not think or behave in the same way as you do. We can choose an administrator? Can't the astrolabe do something? Let's say, we can choose an administrator. Designate an administrator ourselves? <laughs> what an interesting notion, Shining One. To create a new administrator. Hmm. I suppose it may be possible. By transferring the authority, we could turn a new being into an administrator. We could designate someone who would protect humanity, who would desire them to flourish, rather than Polaris or Urai. Once a new being is chosen as administrator, we can use Miyako Hotsuin's device to finish the process. Ura sounds like some guy from the damn League of Assassins. <laughs> we could transform the triangulum that she holds captive into swords for our new administrator. As long as we have the astrolabe, we could transfer administrative authority without the need for any sacrifices. That seems like a favorable outcome. You should become administrator. Why not you become the administrator? If I could repurpose my existence as a sword, I should be able to become administrator. But that leaves one large problem. In 2000 years, when Ur Rai comes, I will have to abdicate the throne. 2000? Since I was originally created as a sword, I must follow the rules of the system. The same holds true for Miyako Hotsuin, since she was created by Canopus. Beings born into the administrator system are bound by its laws. If we wish to ensure humanity's safety for all eternity, we will need someone else who will side with you. Can a human take the throne? Hmm. A human on the heavenly throne. An interesting notion, to be sure. It is true that humanity is not a product of the administrator system, and therefore not bound by its laws. One of your kind would not need to step down from the throne after their cycle is complete. Furthermore, what being would be more likely to take humanity's side than a fellow human? How should we select somebody? Whomever you select will be guiding the fate of the world. This decision requires careful deliberation. A human being taking the throne as an administrator. It is certainly fascinating to consider. You say your farewells to Al Saiduk and walk away, so that's another possible ending for us. Eternal struggle. Let's watch. Uh, no, we. we yeah, I guess we'll hang out with Ronaldo. No, screw that. Can we hang out with Side Duke again? Or some oh there he is, Side Duke right there. Oh, we can hang out with Miyako. It's been a while since we actually could. Miyako is watching your friends from a distance. Aren't you going to join them? No, it isn't necessary. I'd likely just get in the way. It is not as though I truly comprehend human emotions anyhow. But I suppose that is to be expected. I cannot even comprehend why I have such a fierce desire to protect humanity. What do you mean? I am merely a placeholder. An entity created by Canopus to play a role as the head of the Hotsween family. You're just a TBA? I'm sure that even these feelings I hold were simply given to me when I came into existence and only given so that I could convincingly play my role as a Hotsuin. Is that so? When did you find out? Perhaps it would be best if I told you my story. I've always felt a strong need to protect mankind, as I was groomed to be head of the Hotsuin family. These feelings existed long before my awakening as Kor Karoli. I never had any doubt that I possessed the right outlook to lead the Hotsuin clan. Then one day, 
Alcor appeared. Miyako starts to tell you how she first met Psyduke. One day at band camp. Who are you? How'd you get in here? Or rather, why are you here? You are Miyako Hotsuin, are you not? I am Alcor, a creation of Administrator Polaris. I am one of her swords. <sighs> Alcor... Administrator... Polaris... Swords? Why do I know these words? <sighs> Am I... inhuman? Well, I wouldn't phrase it in that way myself. A light shines within you that is quite like theirs. Similar, but not the same. You and I have a lot in common. We're the same sort of being, it turns out. But you believe me, don't you? Even without my saying these things, you know them to be true. Human, yet not. I'm... I am Kor Karoli. So that is your true name. It was the divine order of the universe. I was given a place as head of the Hotsuin family. I was created to fulfill that role? But if that's true, then my passion, my desire to be a shield for mankind, was that forged as well? I can't answer that for you. But let's think of it in this way. Why do you feel the desire to protect man? I don't know. I can't understand it. I just feel it. And it's because we're engineered, because you aren't exactly human, that you doubt, don't you? You doubt your authenticity. You doubt your feelings. I, I do. I tell you now, it's how you address these feelings that is important. <sighs> Humans are wondrous, so full of possibility. You are wondrous yourself for wanting to protect them. At least, those are my feelings on the matter, Miyako Hotsuin. <laughs> that was interesting. That is how I awoke as Kor Karoli. My meeting with Alcor shook the foundation of my identity. But he affirmed the truth of who... of what I am. From the moment of my awakening as Kor Karoli, I have used my knowledge and understanding to develop a plan and set it in motion. I would see Alcor sit upon the heavenly throne as a true administrator. However, when he caught wind of my plan, his reaction was not as I imagined. He was... cold. Let's see how he reacted. I do not approve of your plan. But tell me why! This plan could save the world! We only need to sacrifice you, me, and the 13 people you entrusted with administrative authority. Your plan will crush their potential. <laughs> if such a small sacrifice is all it takes to save humanity, then we should make that sacrifice. Would you rather see the entire species purged from existence? Of all those in the universe, I thought you would understand. You, who awoke my true self! I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> you mad though? I was lost. Alcor had told me my plan would crush their potential. But I was committed. There was no hesitation when I decided I needed to capture him. I'm sure you can fill in the blanks after that. After capturing Alcor, I asked him time and again about those he had gifted with the administrative authority. Still, he refused. That's when I released Nicaea, the program he created, into the world. I had hoped it would lure you out. I was aware of the consequences. I was aware of the dangers and the damages. Normal humans would hesitate, question, fear when faced with such a decision. In order to save the world, I chose that path willingly. I suppose I am just a being created by Canopus after all. It's ironic. The more I try to protect humanity, the less human I become. It's your inner struggle. 
Perhaps. But I am not searching for a resolution to my troubles. Hmm. My apologies. I may have spoken of myself too much. I wonder why I become so talkative with you. I think I am beginning to understand why Alcor and the others are so loyal to you. Sometimes it's good to rely on people. You should open up more often. No, I can't anymore. Well then, I should be going. Farewell. Yako gives you a lonely gaze and quickly rushes off to repair the terminal. You still ain't done with that damn thing? Ah, she leveled up to level 3. What do we get? What do we get? In addition to the existing possibilities, you can now fuse a sand dolphin. A sand dolphin? Oh, he's one of the dolphins that rides in the sand. <laughs> Looking at. <laughs> so, your boy, Lazy Consideration, Joe's all the way in Nagoya. We're gonna hang out with Yamato again. Yeah, let's hang out with Yamato once more. You know, let's hang out with Ronaldo, though. Mm, yeah, let's hang out with. Yeah, let's hang out with your boy Ronaldo. You see Ronaldo deep in thought. Huh? Oh, hey there. What up, Ronaldo? Ronaldo! <laughs> Still letting passion guide you, huh? <laughs> Humanity itself is driven by passion. Without it, we would be lost entirely. But unfortunately, this crisis we're facing cannot be solved by passion alone. I was thinking about what we're going to do with the world after Canopus is gone. Yeah, Yamato's been talking about that a lot. If we manage to defeat Canopus, we can use the Astrolabe to restore this devastated world. But Miyako and Saidu both say that won't stop more administrators from invading. If no true administrator takes the throne, then the administrators will continue to lay siege against humanity. We would be captured in an endless battle, struggling against a countless number of foes. We'll defeat each and every one. What? Are you suggesting we defeat every star? No. Wait. Perhaps that's it. If we are able to defeat Canopus, we'll have full control over the Astrolabe, right? And if we needed to, we could just regress the world over and over again. As long as we don't lose the administrative authority, we could continue to battle any invaders, and we can win! Hell yeah! What if we lose? If that happens, humanity may be lost. But we can't lose. The 13 of us and Saiduk need to stay alive, no matter what. Who said we gotta win 9,000 battles in a row? <laughs> we'll just need to stay on our guard. I think, I think we can do it. Fighting an onslaught of administrators certainly won't be easy. Wait a minute, didn't they die in the second world? Wouldn't they have lost their damn authority? But they used the damn astrolabe to reset everything, right? So even if they, if some do die, they can easily just revive using the Astrolabe, right? But this way, humanity can continue to control the Astrolabe, to use it for the sake of humans. Now the walks away still pondering intensely.